Hi there! What is Last Shot? For me personally, Last Shot is the one you take at the local pub that makes you black out, only for you to wake up at 5 a.m. at the local park, next to a farm animal that's a bit too fresh for McDonald's, only wearing a bathrobe and a gas mask. Oh, and also Last Shot is a video game. Let's start the review. Let's start with the story. It's a diesel punk world where war is constant element in the background. Game starts with our hero sleeping deeply in his bed while bombs drop in the background. When I say deep sleep, I mean he doesn't seem to even flinch during the explosion. He just kinda wakes up and slowly gets up from his bed. Also, I think his cat might be dead. Anyway, first thing you do is turn off the alarm and fix the TV. This game just kinda throws you into its world which, despite being war-torn, looks so damn appealing, detailed and fun in a grey war-torn, uh, quirky way. Just looking at the comments in the trailer of this game, everyone kept saying how it's like Mr. Burns as a young man and I can kinda see that. I just love the style of this game and it being kinda 2D or 2.5D, whatever, the backgrounds have so many nice details in them that makes the world seem alive and grandiose as there's sometimes warships flying in the air and constant bombing going on at places. It kind of makes you feel tiny. Well that covered the graphics too but the story overall from what I gathered is that you're a regular guy whose job it is to fix war equipment and so you go on and do that. There's also these letters that reveal a bit of a backstory about the main character's girlfriend who also went to war and got caught. Despite that, this isn't a rescue mission. The story requires a bit of interpreting from the player in the sense that there's no talking in this really. Or, well, there is, but it's weird mumbling mostly. I mean, I was sure that this game was gonna turn into a rescue mission, but nope. The main character just kind of moves on forward and uh, fixes shit. The letters from Girlfriend, they do seem to be like their own totally separate collectible thing in this game at first, but in the end they do connect with the main character and his uh, quest of moving forward and fixing shit, doing puzzles, from left to right, he just constantly moves, so yeah, at the end, when they actually did connect, that came as a kind of a surprise, so my reaction to the whole thing was pretty much like, oh, okay. Gameplay in this game is solving puzzles and some platforming. Puzzles aren't too hard and they're logical stuff. None of that Resident Evil, here's a creepy vague poem for you as a hint, so try to guess in which order you need to violate all those stuffed animal stuff. But more like turn these pipes around and try to get the steam pressure balanced or something. Or how to stack crates to get over barrier or up to some ladders. I dug it! Little light brain exercising never hurt anyone. Or, well, at least I've never heard the reason from anyone because their head exploded was because they were filling out some crossword puzzle. I mean... Uh, obviously, because they're dead. Uh, then there's the platforming. The controlling of the guy may not be the tightest and jumping around does feel a bit floaty, but since the platforming isn't too challenging in this one, it's kind of easy to overlook those. You also have a wrench and a hammer, and you mostly use them like you would use them, usually. Hammers for pounding, wrenches for screwing. When it comes to sound design, the sound effects around the world, they're alright. It's nice to hear a band playing in the streets and stuff like that, or it will be nice once you open the menu and lower the goddamn music level. By default, the music is a bit too loud and also it's nothing special. Kind of generic tunes which usually I'd be alright with, but when the graphical side looks as marvelous as in this, I would have hoped for the music to follow so it would have made the world feel even more magical. It did have better fitting music towards the end, but the track loops pretty quickly so there's always a bit annoying part when it does that, or at least that bothered me a bit. And like I mentioned, there's no voice acting really, just that weird mumbling. I do like that style too if the storytelling mechanics support that by making communicating more body or facial expression heavy or something else, which here it was at times, but also this did mostly just feel kind of aimless going forward and solving puzzles kind of stuff, so I didn't really think that the story was the main draw here. Mostly the puzzles and details of the world. 
And when it comes to downsides in this game, I kind of went over most of them already. I mean, there's the floaty controls, but the nature of the platforming isn't really that demanding, so it's not a huge scratch. On the background music side, I think that could be a bit more fitting for the overall tone of the game or the graphical style. Maybe complement it more, but that could be just my preference, so yeah. Also, the game is easy and short, but then again, that makes it kind of good snack between bigger games when you want to just take a breather. Story could have been maybe a bit more fleshed out or uh, brought out better throughout this game, in my opinion, too, you know. Um, they could have maybe added some little time nods from the beginning of the game to the end of the game. I think that would have made it feel more organic, the overall flow of the story. What I mean by that is, at the start of the game, there's this one part where you have to get past this dog. And uh, you get past the dog when you give him bone. And towards the end of the game, there's one scene where you're crawling away from a dog. The dog's trying to eat you. Maybe it could have recognized you. You know, that's the dude who gave me the bone and, you know, decide not eating you. Because now the dog just kind of suddenly just turns and runs away, which didn't really make much sense to me. I like that type of little details in the story overall, but you know, it didn't really affect the gameplay or game overall that much, but uh, that would have been kind of nice. Eh. But overall, I'd say this is a fantastic looking light puzzler slash platformer that made me rack my brain and I like my journey through the war torn scenery. Took only three hours to beat this, but for all you egotistical, narcissistic sociopaths who like to pat themselves on the back, I got the platinum trophy in that three hours. So, eh, eh, eh. so hey, easy platinum trophy. We all know people who are obsessed with those. <laughs> this game is for you. You especially. But I think it's time for me to slap a score on this game. And I think I'm gonna go with 6.5. It's not the greatest game, but it ain't the worst game either. The graphical style, that just, that just drew me in. I really like the world and the details in it and all that. And the puzzling, you know, it's not anything groundbreaking. You probably, if you like puzzlers, you've probably done similar puzzles in a lot of other games too, but it's always nice to rack your brain. I really enjoy that. The platforming, it goes there on the side. It gives you something to do between the puzzles and uh, it was all right. It was all right trip through war-torn, uh, fantastic looking little uh, scenery. From what I checked, on Steam this game was under $10. It was like $9 and something, so it's not really that expensive. It's a nice little snack between bigger games, like I mentioned before. So, you know, keep that in mind. So, yeah, I'd say if you want something quick just to maybe kill an evening, you know. You know, sometimes you gotta challenge those brain cells, and uh, I think this game was kind of nice way of doing that. I, I did enjoy this. Hey, and also, this was my first time I got a, a free key to review a game. I haven't really asked those before. Now I figured, you know, why not give it a try? I might do this in the future, although, you know, I gave it 6.5. People usually don't look at that as good, but I think games with 6.5 are still, you know, really playable. I do love those. So who knows, maybe this was my last review copy, but hey, I had a good run, you know, one game and uh, really enjoyed it and uh, doing this review, so I'm happy with what I achieved with my free keys if this is the last one I ever get. Anyway, I think it's time for you to fuck off now and I'll fuck off and uh, we'll meet back here when I upload more crap and something like that. I'm gonna go uh, uh, do something, I don't know, maybe I'll go and beg some new keys. Who knows, you know. There's Assassin's Creed Shadows coming up, you know, Ubisoft, I could use a trip to Disneyland, so <laughs> how about it? I heard you give those out, uh, I'll give you a, a 7.5 guaranteed. Never been to Disneyland. <laughs> nah, just kidding. Do I look like the kind of guy who'd take bribes? But anyway, um, you have a good evening, day, or morning, whatever. Only psychopaths watch reviews this long first thing in the morning. So, you know, if you're one of those, uh, I hope you have good psycho rampage, whatever you guys do, I don't know. Pfft.